Hey guys, welcome. So I just want to go ahead and recap of what we just talked about last class. So we actually listened to Addison talk about hustling for success in the kingdom of heaven. And then we also listened to Tiago talk about Sabbath. Now, to kind of recap of what that was, so it's more of like hustling for work and then resting. And then I'm talking about overwork today. So the whole overall question of today is how do we deal with overwork in a society that tells us the more work we have, the better. And so that's something that I started to kind of like think about and really try to grasp for myself. And all I could think about was the time I worked in the food industry. I don't know how many of you have actually worked in the food industry before, but when I worked in the food industry, I worked at Marco's. I was a shift manager and I was there to the late hours of the night. And I was trying to think in my head, like why? am I here? <laughs> and I just remember sitting there and we literally, it was closed till probably like 12 o'clock at night on Saturdays, 11 throughout the weekday. So we're closing and typically when you close, you're not done. So you have to go in and clean everything and make sure everything's prepared. And so it gets to about 2 a.m. And then next morning I'm scheduled for morning shifts. And so you have to go to the morning shift, do everything you need to. And it just became an unhealthy habit for us. Now, when I say that, don't get me wrong, I love work too because you learn so many different things in the process of working. There's a lot of leadership skills you get. There's even um, different friends that you meet. And so you get to meet a lot of different friends throughout the time. But I would even say a lot of the stuff that you take can also be applied to what you learn or what you learn can be applied to what you practice. And so to kind of dive in, we're talking about overwork, but what does it mean for like work ourselves? You know, God actually calls us to work and he actually models it for us in Genesis. He actually worked six days in the beginning of time and then rests on the seventh. And this is also addressed by Paul um, in Colossians, but it says in Colossians 3, 23 to 24, slaves obey your earthly masters in everything and do it not only when their eye is on you and to curry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. So now to kind of like ingrass that. So with this passage specifically, we're talking about serving our earthly masters. And so it uses the word slaves, but it can also be translated to servant. And so in a lot of ways, we are servants to people to help continue God's work. But in that process, sometimes we like to think in our heads like I was whenever it came to Marcos of, oh, I have to do this for my boss. But really, if I change that mindset to say, no, I'm doing this for the Lord, then how many more people would I actually reach? Because then you have this idea of, okay, this guy has a joyfulness about whatever he's doing in the moment. Why is that? And so a lot of times I feel like overworking can cause us to lose focus of Yahweh, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So to kind of elaborate this more, when you think about overworking, is it more of the aspect of like, I keep wanting to work and get the job done because the more hours I get in, the more money I get, the more things I can actually pursue. And a lot of the times we get so trapped in that thought that it causes us to th then turn our focus away from God. And so Mark Twain actually describes it as this. He says, the bane of Americans is overwork and the ruin of any work is a divided interest. And so if we have a divided interest from God himself, then what are we actually focusing on? Are we focusing on our self ambition that we have for that in the moment that we are pursuing and so in a lot of ways then we look at the scripture uh, Proverbs 16 2 through 3 says all a person's ways seem pure to them but motives are weighed by the Lord commit to the Lord whatever you whatever you do and he will establish your plans so if we automatically commit to the Lord God I'm going to do this for you and I want to make sure everything I do and I work for fulfills the purpose you have on my life, then there shouldn't be a confusion of what we're doing in the process of us working. Now that's to basically say that overworking can take over um, our thoughts and really stir us away from who God is, but God also calls us to rest. So resting, I would say, is my second point. So the first one was work is good, 
And then the second one is resting is good. And so to kind of jump into scripture real quick, it says in Exodus 20, 11, for in the six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. See, the Sabbath is what in that time had a specific rest that they did throughout the week. So they worked six days, then the Sabbath day they took, just took rest. So Sabbath for us looks different in a lot of different ways for different people and things like that. So for me, the way I Sabbath is I hang out with friends just because it gives me energy and I feel I'm kind of like rejuvenated by it. But then also I spend time with the Lord. Um, I eat whatever I want because it's so much fun to do that. And then I also go play a sport if I feel like it. Whatever in the moment, it's kind of like up to your um, discretion. But that's what it looks like for me. Now, for Daniel, it may look different. For Bella, it may look different than ours. And so to kind of understand that is you're taking a break from all of the work so that you can then pour back into the work. But in Hebrews Paul actually describes this, and it says, There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest, so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. So our disobedience of ignoring our rest can cause us to overwork ourselves and then shut down. And so how do we like grasp that idea and really say, well, how am I going to make it in the long run if I can't rest or if I can't work properly? And so my third point is endurance is good. So you want to be able to have endurance to be able to keep going along the way, but also not have these moments where I'm stuck in a season because I overworked myself or I'm getting too lazy because I didn't work hard enough. And so a part of that, there was a Harvard study done by Dr. John Ross, and he's a medical professor there, practices medicine, and he did a study of 600,000 people. And there was two different groups, so there was a group of 35 to 40 um, hour working people, and then there was a group of people that worked 55 plus hours. And the statistics actually blew my mind, but it made so much sense in the same idea that when it came down to it, 13% of the people who worked 55 plus hours were more than likely to get a heart attack. And then also in the same sense, that same group of the 55 plus hours were also more than likely to get um, a stroke by 33%. So obviously we're seeing these physical like bounds to us if we overwork ourselves, but then we also see that they're spiritual, emotional, and physical. So, I mean, that opens a whole new can of worms that we can talk about. But, you know, you start thinking about overwork, you get lack of sleep. What comes from lack of sleep? Depression, anxiety, and just a whole bunch of things that, you know, we can try to grasp our minds around, but then a lot of us, when we lose sleep, we have this moment of, oh, well, I'm bored, so I'm gonna eat. You know, things that may not be healthy for us, we can get from overworking. And so how do we make it, um, how do we make it healthy for us in that way? So I actually brought my water bottle, but I didn't bring it up with me, so that's my fault. But basically, <laughs> so in a lot of ways, with how we overwork ourselves, we have, we're like a water bottle in a sense, you know? And so whenever we open the bottle, we expect there to be water in it. But if you're not resting, you're not filling yourself up, there's gonna be no water in it. So then when you keep trying to pour out and keep pouring things and it's not working or nothing beneficial is coming out, how are we actually going to pour back into what we need to? And so the Sabbath, in a way, when we keep the Sabbath and we have that rest and we fill ourselves up, then we can pour into things like family, work, and things like that. So when we do that, then it allows us to have a healthy balance to be able to um, grasp that together. And so we talk about this water bottle illustration to kind of like get your mind stirred about it, but how do we actually apply this to our lives? And so one, I would say address the priorities. What are your priorities? For me, and maybe for you, but this is one that I suggest for everyone. It's God is number one. Second is family. And then third is work. And so in my mind, if I love God and I pursue the heart of God and know that 
I'm going to strive for what he wants me to do, then that's going to outpour into my family, and my family's really going to start experiencing what I'm seeing and how I'm learning, but also I'm going to pray for my family, do things um, that help build them up rather than tear them down. And so now that things are going well at home, then when I come to work, I have this mindset of, okay, now I can step away and realize that we're good in this area. And sometimes things do hinder, so um, you may have something that happens, but then work comes into play and I can go to work with the mindset of, okay, I'm ready to tackle the challenge for today. But with work too, I would also suggest that you can't let this over bear the other things in your lives, which is why God and family comes first and second. So moving on from the second point, then we have make your priorities non-negotiable. So we have address the priorities, then we have make your priorities non-negotiable. So what do I mean when I say this? Nothing's gonna interfere with my study and what I do personally with God. So with God, nothing should interfere with that. But then because I do love God and I'm seeking his heart, then I um, want to make sure that I'm there for my family, doing things, spending intentional time with parents, or with cousins, things like that. And then with work, making sure one non-negotiables for that would be I'm not taking work home tonight or I'm going to make sure that I get this done today so that tomorrow I can spend this time on meetings. And so looking at that, the third point, so we have address the priorities, make your priorities non-negotiable, and then put it into practice. So how do you even put it into practice? So now that you addressed it, and you know that your priorities are non-negotiable for yourself, I would even suggest look at your schedule. So that's what I do. I have to look at my schedule consistently and say, okay, I have time for this area and I have time for this area. How can I manage this so that I'm still serving God the way I need to, filling out his purpose for my life, but then to how am I serving my family and then how am I going to serve work? And so that's the big encompassing idea of you don't wanna overwork yourself that way we can practically and have endurance throughout the time of us working. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for letting me to be able to speak with everyone here today. We just ask that you continue to work in our lives and allow us to have that healthy balance between work and resting. God, thank you for everything you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.